Can you talk mm-hmm. about your experience of how you got into this and how you got to work with someone like Hal Huggins, Dr. Rao, and others on this journey into becoming the biodentist? Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting how it all fold, unfolded in my lifetime. Um, so my dad was an orthodontist. And in high school, I became a lab technician. So I got good at delivering, making appliances, Hollies, uh, orthodontic appliances, bending wires, delivering appliances um, in patients' mouths. So I got proficient with my hands at not only making them, but delivering them. Um, and then as I went through college, I always loved sciences, but I'm also an art, you know, I'm very much of an artist. Um, uh, I'm a musician. I play drums and percussion. Uh, that's really what I wanted to do um, at that time in my life. But uh, there, one day I just got accepted to dental school and um, it just seemed like that was the most important thing to do rather than go to Los Angeles and live out of a car trying to be a drummer. And so uh, four years later, I became a dentist. Um, during my dental training, I learned that dentists had the highest suicide and divorce rate of any profession. And that was back in the late 80s. So for me, the writing was on the wall a little bit, but I didn't know what I didn't know. I went through, obviously went through a very traditional training, um, which is what I call my tooth mechanic training. Um, It's not about disease in the mouth. It's about repair. Okay. And the insurance driven um, incentivization to a disease care system. You know, I didn't understand all that at the time. Um, but that all occurred in Iowa. And then in 1990, I moved to Colorado. I happened to land in Colorado Springs right out of dental school. And I went to work for Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is, you know, a very big insurance company. And I noticed that I was just doing things to people and using mercury and getting very different results with um, the same procedures done in different patients. So for instance, like you do a filling on Mrs. Jones and you do a filling on Mr. Jones in the same day, same procedure, but one patient has a lot of pain and is uh, angry and the other patient is just fine. So I that was another clue to me that, that there's more to this than just being a tooth mechanic. Um, and at the time being in an insurance driven environment, I was, I was, you know, forced to be under a lot of production, uh, uh, you know, just, you were forced to produce. And it just felt to me like it was more about money than it was about health. And I was doing things like placing dissimilar metals in a wet acid environment called the mouth, you know, setting up batteries, uh, and doing, you know, killing teeth, doing root canals when there's toothaches. Which is a which is a, I call that the taxidermy appointment for your tooth, uh, or an embalming. You know, the the day you got your tooth embalmed, um, and because it's kind of like going to a doctor and saying, "Doctor, my finger hurts," and the doctor says, "We're going to take away the blood supply," and you get to keep your finger, you know, but your finger is going to turn black and blue and green and stink, and but you can keep it and it won't hurt, you know. And so it, so early in my dental career. Um, I happened to be watching CBS News 60 Minutes on a Sunday night, and a guy named Hal Huggins comes on. And the conversation is around mercury and dentistry. And um, Dr. Huggins got on there and said, uh, we have science now that indicates that with this, this material doesn't belong in your teeth. And it's very toxic, and it off-gasses um, under many conditions that are common to the mouth. Um, and that caught my attention. So I called Dr. Huggins up and I said, Hey, I, I, um, I'm a young dentist here in town. I want to, I want to talk to you. And he hired me that night at dinner (laughs) to be one of his dentists because I'm also a lab technician and I was local in town and I had an office. And so, uh, I started working with Hal and then, um, uh, shortly, and Tom Levy was involved as well. Dr. Tom Levy was cardiologist in Colorado Springs. And, um, Shortly thereafter, Dr. Hig- uh, the 60 Minutes program, Dr. Huggins Clinic got shut down by the dental board. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's a big reason why Tom Levy became a, a, an attorney to, to defend Hal. But what happened after that is I got involved in the research on root canals because since Weston Price in 1939, there, isn't, there had been no science uh, that I was aware of um, on the inside, what's inside of a, a, a dead tooth. And so uh, Dr. Huggins knew a guy named Boyd Haley, uh, head of biochemistry at the University of Kentucky, that had the science that I could, could identify anything based on molecular weight. 
So Huggins was smart enough to know that the inside of a dead tooth was gases. And we just didn't know what the gases were. We just knew they were dangerous and stinky, right? So um, fast forward to a movie came out about this called Root Cause. It came out in 2019. That's a movie that talks about the science that was performed. Basically, a dozen dentists got together and extracted 5,000 teeth and sent them to Boyd Haley over the course of two years. And Boyd Haley was able to identify that we're dealing with hydrogen sulfide gas, um, methyl mercaptan, and, and thioethers, all of which have a uh, denaturing effect on metabolic enzymes inside the mitochondria. So in other words, this is a reason why gangrene, the treatment for gangrene has always been death. Or I'm sorry, the treatment for gang, for death has always been amputation, sorry. <laughs> um, right. So... Um, uh, ever, you know, always. And, and dentistry is the only profession <clears throat> that thinks that we can disinfect the inside of a tooth that has 80 million nerve endings inside. You know, we've got these miles and miles of tubules. That's all soft tissue. And once it loses its blood supply and it loses its fluid flow, there's no way to seal even, even these root canals that are done with lasers. Um, uh, you can powerfully disinfect the inside of a tooth, but you can't sterilize it. And even if, even if you could, it wouldn't stay that way. And you can't seal it. And there's a lot of dentists that think you can, but no, you can't. Um, and, and since the advent of three-dimensional x-rays, we've been able to see just how much disease we're, re we're really dealing with um, around not only root canal teeth, but all dead teeth and cavitations. So um, so anyway, back to uh, the study. So if anybody is, wants to familiarize themselves with the study that was done on root canals, um, I would suggest they check out the movie Root Cause. Of course, that movie didn't last long. Uh, it was taken down very quickly as because the dental profession doesn't want to have that conversation around uh, you know the, the standard of care of a toothache being an embalming procedure instead of what's you instead of what it takes to save the life of the tooth, which I'll get into um, later in the conversation here.